Welcome back to Cradle. Let's continue to explore what's in this building here. And then hopefully in this episode, I want to actually do what I'm supposed to do, which is make some food. We'll see if I get to that, though. Okay, so where did I leave off? I left off right about here. Yeah, I looked at those pictures. Uh, this thing is locked. Yeah, so let's, let's pick up from here. Uncle Bayartu. Great Grandma Batma. Monte Yubi. Uncle Bayertu brought apricots. Yeah, just a bunch of family pictures. Hello, Father. I've got news for you. Can you guess? You're a grandfather. Yesterday, Sarnay gave birth to a healthy and hearty boy. Thank you for praying for us. Providence surely helped us greatly. In the city, they told us that every other woman these days is miscarrying. I hope that the epidemic will soon be stopped, that joy would return to... Uh, the joy would return into every home. Come visit us soon. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Um, actually, you know what? I will. Zamble. Silent D, maybe? Zamble? Yeah, let's go with Zamble. 2053. Okay, 2053, and right now it's 2076. I wonder if perhaps I'm that boy. I mean, that's just a total guess. I have no reason to believe I am that boy, but if I was, then I'd be in my 20s. Woman with a child. Sign on the back reads, Zamble, two years. Oh. Yeah, so this is, this is from Zamble. So that's Zamble, when he was really, really young. Ulan Bater at a bird's eye view. Tibetan amulet. Yeah, I'm totally mispronouncing, like, every single name. Sorry. Oh my god, you can even open the drawers! <gasps> oh, I could cry. Tibetan Book of the Dead. Pure white flame burns so brightly, so blindingly, that it pains the eyes to behold it. Pure white flame. Collection of Neo-Buddhist fables. Short morality tales. One of them is carefully circled with a marker. Hmm. I should probably read it then. Yeah, it's kind of long, but if it's circled with a marker, I probably should read it. Alright. Let me try to get the first word right. Sitarasana. Sitarasana. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Sitarasana's Path. One night in the woods, a girl named Sitarasana had a curious thought. She suddenly realized that she didn't know who her parents were. It can't be that I don't have parents. I must have simply forgotten them. And I bet they're waiting for me back home, thought the girl. Uh, pardon me, which way do I go to find my parents' home? Sara Sitarasana asked a vagrant with a malcontent face. If you don't know where to go, go toward the light. That's what I always do, the vagrant replied, shaking soot off of his smoking head. Sitarasana looked about herself, to the east. Rays of the rising sun were filtering through the tree trunks. My home must be that way, the girl decided, and headed toward the light. The sun guided her path that entire day. But then evening came and it hid beyond the horizon. The moon rose to the firmament. The girl halted momentarily, wavering, then shrugged and started after the moon. But come morning, the moon melted from the sky, replaced once more by the sun. Sitarasana frowned and turned toward the sun. We'll walk until I reach my goal, she decided. Six days and six nights, Sitarasana wandered through the woods, alternating between the sun and the moon and changing direction, 
until she reached a meadow flooded with a phantasmal light. Beg pardon, but where is the light coming from? I see neither the sun nor the moon in the sky, she asked, she asked Buddha, who was listening to music streaming from a radio speaker. Buddha stuck his finger in the sky and returned the volume knob to its former position. The girl looked up and saw the stars above. She smiled and thought, what beautiful music. Okay, that took a turn that I didn't expect. She found Buddha, who is listening to music through speakers. You know, it seemed all kind of old-timey, but suddenly... technology. <laughs> Tobacco. Regards from Choi Balsan? Zample and Mark. Sarnay with Mom. Crafted a bow. Yep, definitely a strong hunter kind of. kind of theme running through the family. A voucher for one time. for one time donor utilization service. 30 plus transfer center. We shall be grass and bushes. We shall be water and flowers. Great Grandpa Dalha. Or Dalha? Dalha? Probably Dalha. Zambul and Sarnay. Hmm, wait a minute. It looks like I can use the candle. Hold on, can I light it? Oh! Lovely! Oh, I can even blow it out, too. Let's leave it lit. It looks, it looks pretty. Um, even if it is, actually, um, actually, <laughs> the more I look at it, the more I realize that is an extreme fire hazard. Because if you notice, there's like a, a rug draped literally like one or two inches from the flame. You know what, as pretty as that is, that is actually a huge fire hazard. I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna put that out, okay? It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Man, I think that needs to be washed. I think it's been in there so long it's like partially petrified or something. Notification, date, blah blah blah. Dear Bachin Dalha, Please accept our deepest condolences regarding the tragic death of your family. You will be granted assistance in removing their belongings from the contamination zone. Contact us to clarify the details. Oh god. His whole family died. And they're giving him assistance, removing them from the contamination zone. Okay, so I guess one of those bubbles of... What was it? Something toxin? What was the toxin called? Um, I think it was mentioned here, right? Desperatoxin. Yeah, so I guess they were caught in one of those bubbles of Desprotoxin. Another notification. Dear Bachin Dalha, We are perplexed by your sudden decision to change your place of residence and move into the home of your late son. We realize that, at this difficult hour, our advice may seem out of place, 
Nevertheless, we feel it is our duty to remind you of the danger of long-term presence so near the center of desprotoxin contamination. We urge you to leave the 3 kilometer zone as quickly as possible. Should you decide to return to Ulan Bator, please contact our operator. Okay, so he moved in with his late son. That would be me, I'm assuming. Hockey World Championship of 2039. Brilliant victory for the Mongolian national team. Hmm. It's locked. How does that work, though? Like, this looks like it's the lock, but... It, it doesn't have a keypad. Is that like a speaker? Does it need voice activation? Coach's Code of Salvation. Were I given the magical opportunity today to send a one-word text into the past, I would write 3513 and send it to myself. Yes, it is only four digits, but it would have been enough to save our world. This famous quote of Helmet Coach naturally tugs at our heartstrings. Today, when the prospects of returning to our former lives are all but nil, the thought of the chance we had missed torments us all. These days, everybody knows the number 3513. We associate it with a spell that could have saved us all, if only it were cast in time. But how is it that four simple digits could have prevented a disaster? Our exclusive interview with Professor Coach, the pioneer of neurocopying, sheds new light on previously unknown details of, their, of this tragic story. 3513. Okay, I better write this down. That sounds like it's a really important number. There we go. Can't think of anything to use it for at the moment, but might come in handy later. <gasps> Is there something hidden behind the bed? <gasps> Look, I just barely got it. Indirect evidence suggests that this field interacts with more than just matter. Minor disturbances are likewise recorded at the moment of creation of incorporeal constructions, such as human thought or emotion. We hypothesize that the universal conductor, driving the interaction between constructions of varying natures and the field, is form. Form and proportions. However, though we can conceive the notion of a form-based information transfer mechanism, the purpose of such a process remains beyond the scope of our imagination. I'm sorry, I understood, I understood, like, none of that. This field, what is this field? Okay, so it's a field that doesn't just interact with matter, but also thoughts or emotions. Okay. The universal conductor driving the interaction between constructions... What does that mean? The universal conductor driving the interaction between constructions of various natures and the field. I literally don't know what that means. A form-based information transfer system. I don't know what that means either. I can't even conceptualize what that means. Yeah, I really need to look out for hidden documents. Those are probably the most important ones to read. So I want to keep looking behind things. Like, for example, right there. Look at that. Hidden behind the, uh, whatever this is. The receiver? Cable box? Something. <laughs> TV guide for May 2059. What if? What would happen if your neighbor's accumulation container were to spill over? Find out how the city's evacuation service, as well as ordinary citizens like yourself, control risk groups to prevent new desprotoxin emissions. Unprofitable feelings. Nicknamed Ten, Jim leads a pretty unique life, forced to spend a mere two days per month in an active state. So 
citizens of medium and high quotients. Remember, by replacing your body, you give the whole world hope. To fill out the ranks of humanity's rescuers, contact your local mirror transfer center. Remember to replace your body every month. By the time the evacuation squad arrived, he was spinning at 200 revolutions per minute. The poor soul was secured and forced into a reboot. I don't really know what that means either. Dustproof coating warranty. Hmm. Is there dust on it? It's kind of hard to tell. I don't know. It looks kind of dusty. Transfer an indefinite maintenance agreement. Client Bachin Dalha, 69. 30 plus transfer center is the provider. Okay. The customer sets the date and time of the transfer independently. After the body is replaced, the customer shall return rented equipment to the provider. All forms of service maintenance, including unloading of accumulated passium, the customer shall undergo exclusively at the provider's dedicated stations. The provider shall keep the customer's evasion of good heredity tax strictly confidential. Evasion? Good heredity tax. I don't, I don't know what that means. Okay, so it sounds like Bachin, Bachin Dalha transferred his consciousness into a different body, at least one time. Can I pick up the glasses? No. Hmm. Medicine. Stop closing it. Medical report. Patient Bachin Dalha. The procedure of desperate toxin excretion from the body was a success. Poison levels have been reduced to 60. Repeating the procedure is contraindicated. Body replacement and relocation to a new place of residence with lower contamination levels is recommended. Okay, so it sounds like he moved in with his late son to a place that has a large amount of, uh, um, of desperate toxin. And it sounds like it started to accumulate in his body and he was having trouble with that. So they cleansed him, but it looks like they recommend just getting put into a new body. Yeah, I can't look at these, but I'm guessing these are like cleansing pills or something like that. You will recognize this by the sudden increase in sleep duration, up to 10 to 15 hours. At this stage, medicine is no longer effective. With these symptoms, the only method of more or less effectively excreting desperate toxin from bodily tissues is practiced by select specialty clinics. Hmm. Hmm. Sudden increase in sleep duration. Didn't I begin this game by basically waking up? Also, obviously my memory is messed up, so... Maybe I am Bachin Dalha. And maybe I'm suffering from extreme desprotoxin contamination? Can I pick up this part? No. Looks important, but apparently it's not. Grace and Balmer 2 Phytocopier. User instructions. Oh, that's for that copier over there. Discounted accessories for Android decorations. A 95% blowout sale on luminescent Ikebanas from two seasons ago. Uh, wait a minute. Luminescent Ikebanas from two seasons ago. Look at the picture. Luminescent. Kind of spirally. In fact, it looks like... These. These luminescent somethings. Probably 
Yeah, probably the Ikebanas. Hmm. Well, I guess they're on sale. Okay, um, I think that might be it for, like, the big, big, big things that I wanted to check out. Obviously, there's a ton of un unread notes. But I think I've kind of looked at everything. Um, like, the main objects. Let's collect some stuff again. Because, again, the save points aren't very good, so I gotta <laughs> kind of redo everything. Yeah, although I don't think I've... I didn't, I didn't actually look at this central table. Or what the heck this machine is. key to the front door. Hasn't been used in a while. Newspaper of useful advice. Whereas the previous problem was solved with the help of slanting stitches, basting and tacking thread is best for working with felt. The recipient is unconscious. His bodily movements are compulsory and are a mirror reflection of the donor's. In essence, at this phase of the procedure, the donor controls both bodies. The recipient powers on the moment the two palms touch, but does not yet have access to his motor function. Uh, motor functions, rather. By pressing his right palm to the recipient's left palm and looking himself in the eyes, the donor initiates the transmission of memory. As was already mentioned, the mirror effect is critical for a successful transfer. Therefore, do not disregard our advice and install a quality look screen on your future face. That's so creepy. Has to look himself in the eyes to initiate the transmission of memory. That is so creepy. Oh my god. I wonder how that would feel. Looks like that's it for that. Alright, so yeah, what in the heck is this thing? Whoa. Uh, put that back. <gasps> uh. I broke it! It doesn't go back! Um. Balls. Oh god. <laughs> that doesn't go back either. I turned it off. I didn't even know what it was, and I turned it off. Hmm. Yeah, what the heck is this thing? Is this a manual? Oh, before use, switch on the device. Put a finger in the opening for blood sampling. Wait until the gene copying is complete. The data will be transferred automatically to our center. Only people with HQ of 30 or higher are permitted to transfer. Okay, so you have to get verified to have your HQ of 30 or higher. Diagnostic. Scan your memory. Load your data to the transfer center. Okay, so this is to transfer your consciousness. Hmm. It's from the 30 plus mirror transfer center. Well, it looked like it was running just fine. Why, why can't I put put it back together? Alright. I guess I'll use that stuff for something else. Postcard with a view of the city. A sign below reads... Geneva is happy to receive guests with any quotients. Yeah, I think I was using this, like, right before I woke up. This helmet. Which I'm guessing is... I'm guessing is what you need to put on to do the transfer, maybe? Is that related to the machine? Hold on. Put a finger... Switch on the device. It doesn't mention a helmet. 
Yeah, it doesn't mention a helmet. Put your palm. Establish visual contact with the image on the look screen. Is it talking about the look screen on the helmet or the look screen here on the left on the actual, like, base machine? Hmm. I don't know. Not sure. <laughs> That's so cool. You can even toggle the light on and off. Ooh, money. On the image. Committee of Public Safety Building. Sign on the back reads, Beauty will save the world. Uh, sure. Okay, I know there's all sorts of hidden notes, like behind stuff, under stuff. Come on, hidden notes, I know you're back there. Hmm. Okay, let's try to do the main thing. So let's get some paper in here. Uh, get a couple pieces of wood. We can light it for the fun of it. Let's get the pot in there. Or on there, rather. Uh, let's get some water. How cool, it even starts to boil. New task added. What would that be? Oh, it even tells me what to do. So add two cut plum olive fruits. Plum olive grows near the nearby lake. Oh, you know what? That's, a, mm, that's too much of a hint. Yeah, I don't want to use that unless I need to resort to it. Yeah, so I just need some fruit. Um, that's not all I need, though. Let's see. Yeah, heat it. Check. Glass of water. Check. A few cut uh, plum olive fruits. Oh, it actually says there's plenty of them by the lake. I need to go do that. Um, dried root. I don't know where root is, but I need to find it and grind it. And then I need some other stuff, too. Yeah, is there dried root around here? Like, that's apparently not root. Well, let's not worry about it. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's go get some plum olives. But before getting plum olives, why don't we take a look around our immediate surroundings? God, this game is beautiful. Look at... Just look at how much handcrafted care has gone into the smallest thing. Just socks. Look at these socks. They're not just normal bland socks. These are worn socks that have been have seen hard use. You can see there's some hand stitching there to repair a tear, and they're starting to get worn out on the heel. Like, damn. So much love has been put into the environment of this game. It's really amazing. Oh, these would be the, the roots. Whoops. I took more than I needed. Whoa. Whoa. What the heck is that? It looks like somebody was wearing this shirt and got blasted with some sort of, like, space-age gun or something. And it left behind, like, residue. But I don't think that's it. I don't know if it's some super modern, like, repair material? Like, instead of stitching, it's some sort of weird, clear thing, or, or what? I don't know. But look at the way it distorts colors. Neat. Oh, just give me a little hint. Mortar and Pestle must be somewhere in the crockery. 
Yep, I'm sure. Hmm. It's a thing for holding something, I guess. I don't know what. Oh, there's a newspaper down there. Substance out of nothing. A curious physical phenomenon is being observed during experiments synchronizing neurochips with DNA copies. A condensate of unknown substance has been forming inside fully airproof sections of the resonating mechanism. Data gleamed, gleaned from its chemical properties is sure to send shockwaves across the scientific community, researchers claim. Hmm. It's interesting. So a big part of this game seems to be discovering like new forms of matter. Like new things that people didn't know were actually a thing. Like the what was it the despair toxin? Like the toxin and I don't know, it just seems like in the the note I read about form being important and like thoughts and emotions interacting with a with a field instead of just matter. So it seems to be a theme of this game. It's like new materials and new interactions with emotions and consciousness that people didn't realize existed until after they... you know, until after they experimented. Hmm. I think this is a battery. Yeah, green power. Yeah, that's a battery. Uh oh. Oh god. I don't know what just happened. The screen went black for a second for some reason, and now I'm stuck. Uh. I can't crouch. I can't sprint. Um. Man, is this gonna be a running theme where, like, every episode I break the game? First it was the, uh. First it was the tablet. Now I'm stuck in some wood. Seriously? Flashlight, help me. No, come back. Uh, uh. It didn't work. Something bigger. I need something. What's the biggest thing I have? This? Sure. Boost me. Give me like an item boost. <sighs> I'll be right back. Okay, well, since I loaded my save game, everything reset once again, of course, so that means this time I get to try to use this machine before I take it apart. Okay, good. This, yeah, this is, I think, important stuff. Text on the screen. Power on. Loading. Blood sample, done. Okay, so he was going through the procedure to transfer his consciousness, because that's one of the things you have to do, is give it your blood sample. Right, uh, right there. Right? Yeah, switch on the device. Put a finger in the opening for blood sampling. Copying genes. Done. Determining HQ. Error. Continuing procedure is not recommended. Set to manual mode. Done. Error, error, error. Oh my god. Transferring geno copy. Done. Awaiting connection with operator. Cancelled. Neurocopying. Done. Transfer. Done. Visualizing. Done. Visual contact. Done. Mirror phase. Error. Liquidating donor. Done. Okay, so the consciousness transfer thing didn't go so well, but the donor was liquidated at the end. Okay, when did it first mess up? It first messed up on determining HQ. What is HQ again? Only people with HQ of 30 or higher are permitted to transfer. I don't know what HQ is. It's something quotient, right? Or quota, right? Yeah, set to manual, and then they just went ahead with it anyway. But there's an error on the mirror phase. Wait, so 
Visual contact done. Mirror phase error. Visual contact. Visual contact. Uh, let's see. Establish visual contact with the image on the look screen. Okay, check. So, done. Right? Visual contact was done. Yeah, visual contact done. So, right after mirror phase. Mm. Automatic consciousness emulation will be initiated in the recipient. Or you may blink, but do not look away. So maybe confirm visual contact was done, but then maybe they looked away, and that's why there was an error there? I don't know. This, that's not good, though. The freaking donor was liquidated. Okay, I believe I was in the process of looking at stuff over here when I got stuck, so this time let's not crouch behind there. Let's just grab this battery, which is probably used for something. Something important. In fact, can I use it for the TV? Because I know the power button's stuck. Hmm, no. Alright, what else is down uh, back here? It looks like a solar panel. That is a solar panel. I can take it with me, so I'm assuming I need to... Oh, I probably need to install it. Yeah, that looks like connections for the battery. Maybe the battery sat here and it charged to the solar panel, uh, or something. Or... No, where does that go? Let's follow it. It goes up there, which then connects to... everything. Okay, so yeah, it looks like the battery goes there. And that supplies power to this whole place. Okay, so let's... Um... Where did I put the battery? Yeah, let me see if I can go connect the battery in here. So that's what these wires are for. I can put batteries in the box and supply power to the yurt if need be. Okay, so can I put the battery in the box? Uh, I guess I need to wait for me to actually need to? I don't know. I do need to put the solar panel somewhere though. Ooh, I can go up here. God, just look at this fabric. Look at how beautiful it is. Like, seriously, that is some beautiful fabric. Look at all the shadowed contours of it. Oh, you know what we need? Look at this view. Oh, God, you know what? We need a slow pan, don't we? Yep. Okay, if my character would stop slowly falling off of the top of this... Can you please stop? There we go. Alright, let's get a slow pan. Come here, lovely controller. Just beautiful. I can smell the fresh air. Well, not really, but I imagine the air smells pretty fresh. Oh, this is for the solar panel. It fits, I'll secure it later. Ah. Alright, so yeah, I guess I just don't need to do this now. Um, I'll just leave it up there. Actually, it's kind of wigging out. Maybe I won't leave it here. I'm scared. 
Okay, there we go. Nice and stable. Let's see if I can parkour my way to the top up here. Ah, cool. Oh, can I read the label? Satellite antenna, manufacturer Tao Gao, China. I probably totally mispronounced that. Anyway, what was I supposed to do? I was looking for some fruit, right? Let's go get some fruit. God, even the water looks beautiful. Seriously, look at this. Mmm. Just take this in for a moment. Let's go play in the water. And these rocks look awfully strange, don't they? Like, they have these kind of rings around them. Or like cuts, almost like uh, like bread that's been scored, you know? Those red fruit on the tree look edible. Huh? Oh. Oh, it said I need to find something to knock them down. Uh, those trees look really weird. There's just like tons of floating leaves that aren't connected to literally anything. That's really, really weird. Alright, so is there like a stone I can pick up? Or a stick? I mean, I guess I can go back to the, the hut and just, like, throw a cup at it or something. Hmm, I really can't pick up the stones, huh? I find that very implausible. Alright, well let's throw, like, an explosive energy canister at it. Why not? Wait, stick? <gasps> Here we go. Ugh. Ooh, it's so pretty. Alright, let's go make some food. So that hopefully I can get another save point before the end of this episode so I don't have to redo everything I just did. Grab one of these again, too. Bloop. Alright, gotta boil the water. Check. Need to... Okay, I need to add... Oh wait, I need to add a few cut plum olive fruits. I guess I needed more than one. Whoops. Alright, well, I do need to cut them, right? So I need to figure out how to do that, too. Yeah, fruit needs cutting. Thought so. Whoop, no, come back here. Uh, where have I seen a blade? Uh, well, I could cut it, but I can't pick it up. Hmm. I don't think I've seen a knife. Yeah, I mean, like, where's the utensils? Oh, I never, uh, I never opened these up, did I? That's, oh, there we go. Alright, I need a sanitary cutting surface. Let's, um... Oh yeah, let's use this rug that I wipe my feet on every day. That should be sanitary. Perfect. I don't know what this is supposed to be. 
Is this supposed to be a soup? Because if it is, I feel like you should cut it a little bit more finely than two massive chunks. Add two cut plum olive, plum, uh, plum olive fruits. Alright, so I need one more. It's okay. The world's so beautiful I don't mind running back. I'm curious if I can knock down the fruits with my, like, probably explosive canister. Hmm. I think I'm too weak. Oh, so close. Mm, nope, I don't think it's gonna happen. Alright, where am I stick it off to? There's gotta be another one around here, right? Hmm. I got two more. Let's take them both. I'll save the other one for later. Actually, maybe I can cut it right in the bowl. Hmm, maybe not. <gasps> no, come back here! Oh god. Okay, there we go. Next thing, dried root. Don't forget to grind it. Alright, I've got the dried root, so I need the mortar and pestle. Which should be somewhere here. Somewhere here. Hmm. This thing is jammed. Can I, like, unjam it with this club? Huh. Nope. Can I unjam it with a knife? I mean, I don't know if I actually need to unjam it. But I want to. This isn't a grinder, right? I'm pretty sure this is for storing, like, milk or something. No. Oh, there we go. Alright. Uh, I wish it was easier to put stuff down. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's, let's do it like that. Yep, just shove it into the side there, <laughs> leave it on the carpet. And done, I guess. Slow motion catastrophe. Alright, now I just need it to stay upright so I can actually get the contents. Uh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I just put it in like this. Oh, okay, that works too. Okay, almost done, I think. Yeah, just step five, add salt, and the water will turn orange. Right of the pepper, as Grandpa Batchin instructed. Alright, so the salt is right of the pepper. Okay, well that leads to the question of where's the pepper. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm? Could be citric acid. Well, that's not right. Oil. 
Alcohol. Vinegar. I don't see a spice rack. I mean, this looks like where the spices would be. And it apparently only has tiny white crystals that are apparently citric acid. Oh wait, this is the salt. Oh, this is the salt. This, wait, so this is the pepper? This looks like a, like a soap bottle. Alright. Oh, wait, no, this isn't it. Is it? Can I, can I like, shake it? Add salt. Oh. Wait. It's these things? It's these cubes? I thought these were all just tea. Oh, there we go. I said it would turn orange, so that's gotta be it. Okay. These are the spices. That's so weird. I'm, I'm used to spices being in, like, clear bottles or ones with, like... Well, yeah, yeah, just like clear bottles so you can actually see the spices. It's really weird to have them all in these, like, boxes. Where you can't actually see the contents. That's so, so bizarre to me. They just look like... Whoa. What the fuck was that? That was really loud. What was that? Okay, well, the food is made. <gasps> that's what that's for! It's a perch! Oh my god, you're huge! Hi! Be careful, it's really hot. Oh my god. How you doing? He needs his vest changed. He's even, yeah, trying to pick off the, the clasps on his vest thing. Oh, let me get that off you. There we go. Oh, oh. Ooh. Mm. That looks really, really, really creepy. Can I put the vest back on? I don't want to see that. Eh. So this is a synthetic body? Or... I mean, aside from the power source or whatever that is in the center there, it looks... It looks natural. Like, it looks like a, a flesh body. You know, flesh and blood, not, like, synthetic, but... Hmm... Hmm... You know what I just thought? What if... Batchin's consciousness, or the consciousness of whoever used this machine... You know, it was kind of like an unauthorized... Um, transfer. And... Whoever is using the machine had to set it to manual mode to get the transfer to actually complete, and even then it didn't really complete properly. 
What if their consciousness was transferred into this bird? Maybe because they wanted freedom or something? I... I'm just guessing. Like, I don't have any particular reason to think that, but I wonder. Huh. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode because I just got a save point, and the next one probably isn't going to happen for a very long time. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.